exciting day at Dubai Airport. I'm out here to catch the 777X. It's coming in momentarily for the Dubai Air Show. at a show this time, it's the 777X. Let's go inside, check it out. Wow, this is huge inside. One giant cabin, seeing all the way to the end. Just got inside a 777X, quite different to what I expect. I expect deck out interior, first class, business class, but it's like a one giant interior, a vast interior from the front to the back. And uh, I'm gonna check out with some of the engineering and ask them about how the testing goes so far. Mike, what, what's the station call here I'm sitting in with you? Uh, we're at the instrumentation rack and we monitor all the flight test equipment on the airplane. You know, I know all the new airplane needed to be tested. What kind of tests you perform um, on uh, the 777X so far? We test uh, stabili stability and performance, uh, brake testing, uh, engine performance. What sort of stability tests you mean? Uh, we do stall testing, uh, wind up turn testing, uh, landing performance, uh, hydraulic system testing, Lots of work Lots ahead of, of work. certification. Yes. We've got uh, 12 water tanks uh, in the back of the plane. There's another 12 in the forward part of the cabin. Um, they're used for uh, balancing the aircraft during test conditions. Um, we can move water from forward to aft, one barrel at a time, or all groups um, using this water pump and the plumbing that you see that runs through the aircraft. Uh, it helps us stay in flight longer and, and test the aircraft outside of its normal uh, flight envelope for a longer period of time, allowing us to collect more test conditions uh, and to uh, expedite the test program. So you can see that it helps outfit the rest of this aircraft uh, with a big test interior. This is our trailing cone and it'll deploy out the back of the aircraft while we're flying to help uh, calculate or determine the air pressure, which will help us determine altitude and airspeed. Uh, it's a static source and uh, it, yeah, it's used to calculate altitude, airspeed. I guess this is a perspective I can show you just how wide the 777X with no interior apart from testing station. John, what's your first impression when you get inside a 777X? It's huge. It's, it's just the cabin is absolutely massive. And I thought it was the standard width as the standard 777, no? Well, actually, on the outside it is. But one of the things that Boeing did was to make the seats just a little bit wider in economy. They actually carved out the, the sidewalls. So these, these frames underneath the, the insulation blankets here are actually wider and more shallow than they were on the 777. So they actually put more room in the cabin across to add ah, more seats. So they reduce yeah. the room between the panels to the window to the frame. So they give it a bit more room so they can fit a 10 abreast seating. Exactly. So so um, airlines like Emirates have 10 abreast now. But yeah. I think one of the, the big goals is to really um, add the, those extra inches so you get kind of the same sort of kind of comfort standard like as what you'd have around nine abreast. Just really intricate to see the winglets from the window outside. The wing is huge. Uh, 
That's pretty cool, right? The folding wingtip. I think one of the biggest features from outside on the 777X. We brought over a lot of the architecture from the 787 to the uh, 777-9 or 777X flight deck. As you can see, we have the large displays. We have the uh, five large displays. They can be used to uh, present other information, so it's very flexible, or we can uh, use each half of these large displays. So this is very much like the 787. Another feature that's like the 787 is the heads-up displays. On this airplane, they are optional, so the customer would have to select them. Uh, on the 787, they're part of the basic design, but we wanted to provide the option of uh, customers to, to, to select the uh, HUDs or not. Uh, as far as the overhead goes, this is very similar to um, the commonality to both 777 and 787. The systems are still 777 uh, legacy, so we have the same hydraulic system, electrical system, air system, uh, just like we do on the 777. Um, we have a, a Again, the same layout that we would have on the 777 in the overhead. The down below, on the lower uh, panel here, on the lower aisle stand, we have our uh, TCP, which is again a tuning control panel, again, just like the 787. So there's a lot of commonality here in the flight deck uh, of the 777X with the 787 airplane. You flew 15 hours from Seattle Boeing Field to Dubai. How was the handling on that flight? Oh, it airplane. was probably the longest flight you ever did, right? Absolutely, yeah, yes. Uh, flying here to, from uh, Boeing Field to Dubai Direct was the longest flight for the uh, 777X program to date. Um, the airplane handled very well. It was very comfortable. Um, and uh, I think that crews flying this airplane will find very little, no difference really, between this airplane and the 787 or even the 787, very similar in the way that they feel and their handling qualities. What are the milestones so far you achieved in terms of flight testing? Well, we've, uh, we've completed uh, some of our initial testing uh, of the uh, flight control system, uh, the initial phase of testing for that. We've got uh, additional phases coming up, but we've got that first testing done. We've done uh, a handful of other types of testing, more than a handful of brakes testing and uh, a number of different other testing. Right now we're doing some testing in uh, Florida uh, with the airplane as well. So we're making good progress on the flight test program. Um, the folding wind tip, where do you have deployed the folding wind tip? Only on the runway? Or oh. you can you deploy also in the air or not? No. Um, so the, uh, the the switch itself is right here. It's in the fold position here, and you can see that it says folded. When the uh, airplane approaches the runway, and we have the designated spots for where the wingtips can be extended, then the crew would pull this knob and push and rotate it into the extend position. At that point, when the wingtips are extended, it'll show green and it'll say extended. So um, mainly is on the runway. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. just prior to the runway, just prior to taking to the runway, and we do have the checklist that captures whether that's been completed or not to make sure that we uh, complete all of the checklist items to include getting the uh, folding wingtips extended. So I'm just standing underneath the fuselage. It's really, really long, 76.7 meter, more than 250 feet. So it makes it the longest 777, and I think it's also the longest Boeing airplane they have produced. This is the 777X engine, GE9X. What's interesting is this engine is rated only up to 110,000 pounds, which is 5,000 pounds less than the predecessor 777-300ER GE90, because they claim the engine is 10% more efficient, so they don't need as much as process the old engine has. know the 777X has some delay. Just want to find out when you think the airplane can be delivered to an airline. Right now the plan is we're going to deliver by the end of 2023 and we're on schedule to hit that. So we've got four flight test aircraft. All of them have flown. All of them are in testing. And so we're moving along really well on the developmental phase of the testing, which is Boeing going through everything we can on the aircraft and ensuring it's as complete and ready as we can. Then we proceed into certification, and that finishes before EIS at the end of 2023. But, you know, COVID hits uh, the wide body market really hard. It did. You know, 
what are your hopes now? You're not going to make any more sales for a while, I guess. So COVID depressed the entire aviation industry, um, up to 90% drop off in traffic at the worst of it. Um, and it disproportionately will hit long haul international as the longest recovery. So we've already seen domestics come back um, pre-2019 levels in some cases. Um, regional will recover next. And the long haul international business is going to be the last to come back. So that certainly has slowed down demand for aircraft at this scale. Um, but what it does mean, sort of a silver lining to a very unfortunate situation is, we're in a position to start to deliver this aircraft right at the time the market needs new, large, efficient, wide-body aircraft. So, among other things, the pandemics accelerated the retirement of the 47 passenger aircraft, the 380, and it will start to bring out some of the older 777-300ERs. 777-9 will enter the market at exactly the right time and position to help replace all those aircraft. That was a quick tour of the 777X. Certainly, it was the media's attention at the air show here. I can't wait to fly on it in 2023.